Hi everyone, um, welcome back to another little, uh, short demonstration for the course. Um, today we're going to concentrate in, on mixing greens. Now I know a lot of people are having difficulty mixing greens um, and I think it's one of the, the more difficult colours to use uh, when you're doing landscapes. People tend to think of everything being green and often the painting will just look overall too green. And you know, even more experienced painters like myself will get caught in that trap of painting too many greens within a painting and then you end up with a very green painting. So you're going to try and find, uh, use your colours carefully and find alternatives that work within the landscapes because we tend to stitch everything together and think well that's a tree so that's going to be green that's a bush that's going to be green well we've got to actually sort of use our imagination a little bit and enhance those colors um, when we're actually producing a painting because we're actually condensing all that information into maybe a sheet of paper which is what um, 14 inches by 10 inches and um, we need to use our colors more sort of thoughtfully so we don't end up with such a green looking painting. Um, so today what I'm going to do is uh, I've, I've selected three colours. Um, now you can use any three colours, it doesn't really matter. I'm not going to get bogged down in which ones to use. But I'm using cadmium yellow, uh, Windsor blue and alizarin crimson. And I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix um, what, one, two, three, four, four, four greens sort of uh, from bright um, becoming slightly more green than the last one I do is going to, I'm going to show you how dark I can get it because I've heard from a lot of people that um, they're having difficulty getting their darks really green and there really shouldn't be a problem with that at all um, and as long as you and if you stay in the same three colors they'll work throughout that uh, whether you're painting a tree or a bush or whatever and it will it will be harmonious now you can obviously when you have three colours like that, without me mixing the complete range of greens you can get, because obviously you can get reddish greens, more blue greens, more yellow greens, just by adding more of one colour. Now that's for you to experiment with on a piece of paper. You you can you can mix many different greens from the, these three colours. Um, but this is just going to show you um, starting from almost yellow, going all the way through to, to a dark green, then at the end I'm going to paint the darkest green and you're going to see exactly how dark we can get it. Um, so yeah, okay, I'll just sort my paints out and then um, we'll get ready to paint. Okay then, now before we get started I thought I'd just show you in my um, sketchbook what I sometimes, what I have done, just to get a little bit of practice with colour mixing and it's a useful thing to do because once you've got these little swatches you can either, like I say, keep them in your sketchbook or just have them on separate pieces of paper. But um, what I tend to do is mark out little squares. Well, this 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 little exercise here was all about glazing. So basically, you're putting down um, raw colour, neat colour, straight from the tube, and then you're running it over with a different colour. Like, uh, for instance, here we have cadmium uh, lemon yellow across here, and I'm using burnt sienna to run down this way. Um, it's a really little useful technique, and you can see how the colours change. And if so, if you're glazing colours, you can see how you can mix colours without actually combining the pigment, just by actually overlaying one colour on top of another colour. You can see how you get that subtle change. On the right side here, um, this was using um, six colours: um, alizarin crimson, um, Antwerp blue, cadmium red, uh, cadmium yellow, burnt sienna, and ultramarine. And uh, so, out of six colours. Um, mixing them simply you could get this lovely range of rich darks you could get all these lovely bright colors um, here so you know there's j j just from, from a palette of six which would really simplify most people in their palette they have ridiculous amounts of colors and it's not necessary just with six tubes of paint you can actually achieve almost everything you need um, don't get caught up in buying colours you're never going to use. It's just no point. So we'll start mixing our colours now. So first of all on the palette I've got some cadmium yellow, just neat cadmium yellow. And all I'm going to do to this is gradually add more and more uh, Windsor, green, uh, Windsor blue sorry, uh, until we get a nice dark green. And we can just see this subtle change uh, throughout the, on each mix. So just take a little bit of blue. We don't want too much to start with. You want it quite 
so I've put too much in there. Um, Windsor Blue is very strong, but that's not a problem. All I've got to do to change that is add more cadmium yellow and just draw a little bit out here. And we'll start off, I think that's about right to start with. And we'll just add that in the first uh, square. So we've got a lovely green there, that would be perfect, you know, for uh, spring trees to describe leaf. Now, again, you could add more yellow to that and have that a lot, a lot brighter. Um, but I'm just also got to start somewhere. Okay, so now if I wanted to describe, once that's on the page, if I wanted to make some slightly darker foliage to go underneath and it would harmonise with it well, all I need to do is just add more, some more blue to it. Mix it all together. So I've got a darker mix. We'll put that one in next to it. There we go. So we've got our second green there. Now we want to go a bit darker again, a bit more blue. And at any point we can mute these down just by adding a touch of red. So if that's as dark as we wanted to go, but we thought it was too green, we can just top a, uh, drop a little bit of crimson in there and that will just take the greenness out of it. Right, so I want to go slightly darker again, so add a little bit more blue. It's not, it is, yeah, it is darker, but it's bluer as well. So I don't want to touch that one if I can help it. There we go. So out of, uh, there we go, there's an example of what four, four greens just by starting off with just a little touch of uh, um, Windsor blue in the uh, cadmium yellow, adding more and more blue as we go down. Now if we want to add, if we want to make a really dark green, grey green at the end, we just need to Add more blue. Add some alizarin crimson. So it's some of this third colour here we're adding. Alizarin crimson. And of course if we just left it like that we've got more of a purpley colour. But by adding some yellow we get more of a much darker, almost like a black. Let's see what we've got. There we go. Okay then, so we've mixed the whole range here. I want to carry on from this green here, just on these extra three squares, just to see how much darker we can go uh, while keeping it green, but um, getting it darker. So let's just have a look. So we'll have some more blue, a little bit more yellow. So basically I'm just making sure I add enough pigment to get a good dark green. But uh, keeping it, so I think that's probably pretty good. So we'll just do this one. Okay. So we've got, we've got quite a dark green going on there, quite a bluey green going on there. Let's add some more. See, see how dark we can get it. Well, still, so I'm putting more pigment in. 
more cadmium yellow. Uh, more Windsor blue. And like I say, if I wanted to, if I was mixing a really dark green now, to keep I can keep it green, but I can also just dull down the colour by adding a touch of a touch of red. But in this case, I'm just going to be mixing the using the two colours. But if I wanted to take the greenness out and grey it out slightly, I could just add a touch of red. But I want to keep. I'm, I'm basically I'm going very close to the blue, but I'm keeping it on the green side. So you can see how deep we're going here, just with two colours, with the, with the uh, Windsor Blue and the uh, Cadmium Yellow, we've got obviously those four up there, and to follow one we've got these two here. So this is going to be our last one, let's just add more blue again, making sure we're keeping it on the green side by keeping a balance of yellow. It's a brush. I don't want to put that horrible dirty brush on the yellow. But it's all about having enough pigment pigment in, in, in your palette, really. So that's, let's see, you can see that's definitely a green. You can go a little bit bluer while still keeping it green. So basically we've got a green blue. I think that's about as far as we're going to take it. Okay, so it's just slightly darker than that one, and it's very close, it's becoming much bluer. So basically, just using the two colours, the cadmium yellow and the Windsor blue, we've got those range of greens there, followed on by these three down here. So you can go pretty dark. Okay then, um, I hope you enjoyed that little exercise. That just gives you some idea um, of mixing greens using three colours. Obviously there's a kind of infinite range of greens you can mix uh, using all the different sorts of blues. Uh, but we'd be here forever and a day. But it kind of gives you the opportunity to experiment with the colours in your palette. But what I was trying to point out there was how sort of light you can go to how dark you can go uh, using greens. Um, and also the greys you can mix which you can use for your deepest darks in many paintings that you will do. So if you're, if you're struggling to get your darks, that video kind of uh, misinformation kind of tells you how to do that. Um, but, uh, you know, like we said, um, it'd be great if you could do it using your own sort of three blues and then post your results on the forum and we can see what range of greens you come up with depending on the colours that you choose, the yellows you choose, the reds you choose and the blues you choose. Um, and uh, just mix up a variety, post them and let's have a look because that will help people out a lot. Okay, well thanks so much for watching the video and uh, I look forward to seeing your uh, results in the forum. Bye for now.